So today uh, we're going to share some of the research we've done in the last year or so. And uh, I'll start by introducing Wayne Young, who's the first speaker. He's going to talk to us about sheep milk digestibility. Ah, hi there. Um, yes, I'm Wayne Young. I'm from Egg Research, and uh, today I'll talk a little bit about uh, sheep milk. And a uh, question I often get asked is, is uh, what makes sheep milk special in terms of nutrition and, and health effects? And the, the answer usually is, like most scientists, we say, well, we need more research. <clears throat> but firstly, so um, just in broad terms, so I'll just cover some of the some of the questions that we've been asking in terms of what it is about sheep milk that makes it a little bit different. And some of the, the things that we've, we've touched, upon, touched on over the last few years is, is how uh, sheep milk might change the gene expression of, of, of cells in the, in the gut um, and what it might do to the gut bacteria because uh, as a lot of people know these days, the gut bacteria that you have in your gut is actually, rather than just being passengers, they actually play quite an active role in, in your health. Um, some of the other things we touched on was uh, the effects of processing. How does that affect um, the properties of, of, of milk in terms of uh, the effects on, on the consumer? Um, and also something that people are very interested in is the, um, the effects on immunity. So the, in this uh, part of the research, there's basically two uh, groups uh, undertaking this, this um, research, and there's us at Ag Research, and we've been focused mainly on, on rodent models, and also at Otago University, where there have been uh, also a wide range of, of uh, activities, but a lot of it on uh, in vitro cell models. So uh, over the last year, we, we uh, uh, I presented some work at this conference last year, and we saw that sheep milk um, affected the uh, gene regulation in the colon tissue quite differently to cow's milk and some of these genes were involved in pathways to do with uh, cell and tissue growth and development. Other things we touched upon was the effects on the gut community. So these are th these all these, these colored uh, shapes uh, essentially, oops, I lost something. Okay, so maybe I might have to do it in a dance form. Um, <coughs> right, so there were lots of coloured shapes and essentially the take home message was that the communities varied a lot between the different animals that were fed the different sheep and there were some subtle differences that were dependent on the type of diet but uh, what to make of them we're still a little bit unsure. So we did see some effects on the gut, commun gut microbial community but what exactly we're still working on. And then another aspect that we, uh, I think what was going to pop up next was some of the work on the immunity. So we, uh, our colleagues at Otago, oh, lights, uh, found that there was, wasn't actually a lot of difference in how sheep milk and cow milk, for example, uh, affected the immune system, but there were some slight differences in that uh, sheep milk uh, increased production of a, a TNF alpha, so this is a, a signaling molecule that increases inflammation, and it did this when the cells uh, were in contact with LPS. So LPS is something on the surface of some bacteria that is quite toxic. And then another aspect of, of this work, they found that sheep milk could increase the uh, cell proliferation, increase the division of splenocytes, cells from the spleen, which are many of which are immune cells. So essentially, the message was that. Uh, what was the message? Was that the sheep milk um, uh, could had, uh, induces a stronger immune response in terms uh, uh, in response to an infect possi a possible infection. And this has just been published recently in, um, by Otago colleagues at, uh, in this, this journal, Small Ruminant Research. Okay, so another aspect that um, people are very interested in is the whole digestibility of sheep milk. So um, there's a wide range of, of anecdotal evidence suggesting that some of these effects such as uh, reduced allergy, uh, increased lactose tolerance, even though it's lactose is similar from between, is, is the same between different species. Um, but some of this may be down to the differences in protein digestion. Um, and yes, so some of these 
So a difference in protein uh, digestion can have effects on comfort, transit time, uh, production of bioactive peptides. Um, however, the, the ba our basic understanding of how sheep milk is digested is, is still uh, fairly rudimentary. So we set up a, a rodent study, once again, where rats were fed either a, a cow milk or sheep milk. And there was also a third group, which I won't show here, which was sheep milk, which was diluted to have a similar solid content to cow milk. Um, but these rats were fed for 28 days on either the cow milk or sheep milk. Um, they had access to rodent chow most of the time, and this was, and, but for two periods, they were put in metabolism cages so that we could measure their total input and output. Uh, and during this period, they, owned, they were only fed uh, milk, so they didn't have access to the rodent chow. And so some of the results I present uh, will come from, from, from these, this final period, in fact. And at the end of the study, the rats were sacrificed and samples taken for analysis. Um, so understanding what goes into the, the animal is quite important. So this was the amino acid composition of the cow milk and the sheep milk. Um, so you can see, uh, not surprisingly, the sheep milk had, had much higher uh, protein levels, so much higher amino acid, uh, of all the amino acids were essentially higher. Okay, so it's just some of the first data from the study. So this is the, the, uh, the weight of the rats. And as you can see, um, there, was, there was no statistical difference between the rats fed the cow milk and the sheep milk, although that, in science terms, we use these terms statistical significance, which is uh, if there was a 1 in 20, uh, there's only a 1 in 20 chance that, that the results are a fluke, essentially. And um, the, the, the p-value here was actually, uh, was, uh, depending how you analyse it, it was 0.6, so it was close to significant. So the sheep milk rats um, were perhaps a little bit higher in weight than the cow milk, perhaps. Is that is that me? No? Okay. Um, but the interesting thing we saw was that the uh, sheep, rats fed sheep milk ate less food, so the cow milk fed rats had to eat more food, and this makes sense. If the, if the source of milk has less protein, in the, then they would make up for it by consuming more food. So, so that, that kind of makes sense. And the volume of, of milk consumed was the same. There was no, no dis difference between... Um, and these spikes are when they were put in metabolism cages and only had access to the milk. So then this question of digestibility, one way to look at it is that you, you, you know what's gone in, you know how, many, how much amino acid has gone in, you know the volume. So then you can look at the content in the small, at the end of the small bowel, the ileum, and you can measure how much amino acid is in that content, in that, that, that chime. And by inference, whatever isn't in that content has disappeared into the animal, okay? So the ileal amino acid content of the sheep milk was, was higher than that of the cow milk. So it was, it was a little bit, little bit higher. But then actually if you go back to uh, the, uh, the amino acid content of the milk itself, you can see that it's actually it's almost double it's almost double that of cow milk, and yet in the ileal contents, there's only a little bit higher than in the cow milk feed group. So, so essentially, uh, the amino acid has disappeared into the animal; it's been absorbed. And when we work, work the digestibility uh, numbers, um, we can see that actually the the, the sheep milk is is uh, more digestible than the cow milk, the sheep milk proteins. Although, having said that, the, the cow milk proteins are also very, very digestible, so it's, uh, it's, it's not like it's a bad source of uh, protein. Um, so these amino acids have been taken up by the animal. Um, so we looked into the blood to see what the amino acid profiles in the blood was. And you can see that in the sheep milk fed rats, there's, there's actually not, not too different. There were some differences, but, but not too different. To different, but however, where things were different, <coughs> ah, okay. So, so in terms of quantity, but if you look at a uh, do a multivariate analysis where you take all the essentially all these different um, amino acids and you squash them into one uh, into a, a limited number of uh, descriptors, and and then you plot them. Uh, what's basically 
you have here is each, each dot represents the amino acid profile of one animal in the plasma. And they're coloured by what, what uh, diet they were fed, what, what milk they had. And the closer they were, then the more similar, the further apart, the more different. So these two points, the amino acid profile in the blood of those two rats were very, very similar. But this one was very different to that one. So this is essentially how to read, read these plots. Um, so you can see it's very, very clear that there is a difference in what's in, in the blood. And when, when you break, uh, and then when you actually look at the data, the difference is in the essential amino acids. So things like uh, valine, leucine, uh, lysine. Um, so just to, just to wrap up, because I've got the, got the signal. Um, so there was no difference in rat rates, rat weight. So these, these um, so there was, there was no obvious differences in weight gain or, or health. However, um, the rats fed the cow milk did have to consume more milk, and the ileal digestibility uh, was higher in the sheep milk fed rats. Um, and so similarly, the circulating free essential amino acids were higher in sheep milk fed rats. Um, so essentially the take home message from this is the sheep milk is a good source of essential amino acids. Uh, so some of the further studies we want to do, or not, or probably I'll just flick through these, we'll look at some different aspects of um, microbial activity, um, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, the next speaker after me will talk about uh, some of the, the, the minerals um, bioavailability or mineral uptake from this, this same study. And this is something that we uh, will probably pursue a little bit more. Um, so that's me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wayne, for that interesting presentation. And thank you for keeping the time. So now we have time for one or two questions before we move on to the next speaker. I just want to add that in. Uh, thanks, Wayne. Very interesting presentation. I, I was just wondering, why didn't you standardize the protein intake between the groups? Because you're almost comparing apples and oranges now. Uh, standardized protein intake. So at the moment, so for this study we were, at this study, we were looking at the, the, raw, the whole milk, the raw milk. But in future studies, we'll probably will look at the uh, spray-dried powder because at, at that time we didn't actually have access to to uh, milk uh, sheep milk powder. But now we do, so further studies will probably right. take, and then then we can standardise some of this aspect. But even that, even then, it's still quite challenging because you could standardise say protein, but then the fats, uh, you know, how would you balance the fats? Yeah, uh, but if, um, if you look at amino acid uptake, if there's a lot more amino acids in the uh, in the sheep milk because of the higher protein, mm -hmm. you would expect to find a higher profile, I suppose. That's what I mean. Okay, we've got time for one more question. Yeah, my question is just about, uh, you say that the sheep didn't, uh, sorry, the sheep milk doesn't increase weight, but you said the consumption was less for the sheep's milk, so if they oh, can... Oh, sorry, the, yeah, the, the solid food, they consumed a similar amount of volume of, similar volume of, of milks, but they ate less solid food. Yep. Oh, I see, yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Wayne, for your presentation. <laughs>